Now let's find out what we need to do to use the GAM from our application. When we open Genexus, we'll see that by simply modifying the value of a property at the version level, this will mean that the first thing to appear upon executing the web or smart device application will be the login object. Following authentication, the user will be able to start using the application. Here, in Genexus, we can view the version's properties. So now we'll configure the Enable Integrated Security property and assign it to the true value. Note that the output window shows several objects being imported. These are the objects that correspond to the GAM's knowledge base. Once security has been enabled, it's possible to select either authentication only or authentication plus authorization. This is achieved by configuring the default integrated security level property. For the time being, we'll work with authentication only. Several changes occur when the GAM is enabled in an application. Different properties are enabled to configure the login object for both web and smart device applications. We can see that the login object for web property has the value GAM example login. This indicates that the object will be used for the logging in of web applications. And the login object for SD property has the value GAM SD login, which indicates the login of smart device applications. Once the GAM is enabled, we must do a rebuild all in the KB. So, by enabling the GAM, several objects are imported. These objects can be found in the folders GAM underscore examples and GAM underscore library. The GAM underscore examples folder contains all example objects imported with the GAM. That is to say, web panels and panels for smart devices. These objects will be used in authenticating and authorizing users. Specifically, we have the objects GAM example login and GAM SD login, which, as we saw, are the ones configured in the properties login object for web and login object for smart devices. But there are also several objects that make up the GAM's backend, a web application used to manage the repository. There we'll be able to configure users, their roles, permits, and so on, all of which we'll see shortly. The folder GAM underscore library contains all the external objects for allowing access to the GAM's APIs. They are the way to access the GAM's KB from our KB. Additionally, a secondary data store is automatically defined for storing the data to access the GAM's repository. Genexus is responsible for maintaining the structure of this repository and its metadata. Following completion of the rebuild all, we can execute the application with the GAM applied. Let's then press F5 to try, for instance, accessing the property transaction. We will see that a login object is executed first. The execution of this object is automatic every time it becomes necessary. In this case, because we have not been authenticated, we may access with user admin and the password admin123. To execute this login object, all we had to do was configure the properties to enable the GAM, but we did not need to program anything else. This is possible because the GAM allows an automatic access control in each object. Now let's go to the smart device application, where we'll see that the first thing found is also the login panel. Here we'll also enter with the username admin and the password admin123. Like in the web application, once the login data is entered, a redirection is made to the object that was to be executed, in this case, the dashboard. As we mentioned before, the objects imported upon enabling the GAM include a group that comprises the GAM's back end. In order to access this application, from the developer menu of our web application, we must execute the GAM home that is the main object of the GAM's back end. On the left, we will see a menu from where we can access the various options in the back end. Now let's enter the users option. Here we will see all the users defined. 
By default, there will only be the user admin, which we are currently using to log in. We will now define a new user for one of the real estate agents who will be using the application that we're building. For this purpose, from the Add button, we will enter the user definition screen, where we will enter the data and confirm. We then associate a role to the user. So from the object WWUser, we go to the User Roles option where we select Administrator and press Add. Now let's go to the Authentication Types option where we will see that, by default, only the local authentication is enabled. Here is where we must define the different types of authentications we want to use in our application, like Facebook or Twitter for instance. From what we saw in this video, thanks to the Genexus Access Manager, we can have a full and integrated solution to solve the authentication and authorization of our web and smart device applications. This will help us implement secure Genexus applications. Do you want to learn more about the GAM? Or how to use the API's methods and properties from our application? To be continued.